All right, folks, welcome back. A little bit of a Friday session with ICT. <laughs> All right, we're looking at intraday scalping in the Forex market. All right, so we're going to be covering briefly for those that are new to my work. Uh, this is the traditional open high low close bar. Many of you are probably accustomed to using a candlestick when you're looking at charting. But I want to cover the central tenets to how I interpret price, how I read price, and then give you some homework to practice throughout this coming week. And then I'm going to review it with you in a video next Friday and give you some amplified teachings. But it's important that you go through, do your best. It may not be something you understand exactly what you're supposed to be doing. It's okay if you're that new. But if you've been around for a while and you've looked at some of my content, you probably know what I'm looking for. So with that, let's cover again the architecture of the daily range. The open, if this is a classic buy day, it's typically the day that everything goes up in the market and we're going to specifically deal with Forex here. So all the foreign crosses against the dollar might go up this particular day. It opens or the opening price for that particular trading day opens here, hypothetically trades down very short distance from the opening, large expansion on the upside and closes near the high of the day. That's a classic buy day. The open, when things are bullish, tends to be in the lower quarter of the daily range. And generally, the low is not much below that when it's bullish. So it opens, goes down, finds the low of the day first, rallies up all day long, and then closes near the high of the day. The high is the highest price in that daily range. It's not important for you to know exactly what that price is. Okay, so for this homework assignment and this interactive learning experience, let's put it that way, uh, it's not important for you to know or be able to predict what that high is. I have things that help you do that, but for this exercise and this lesson, try not to worry about that, okay? You're only really trying to worry about finding something in the middle, okay? And the low, obviously, when we're bullish, we're looking for the low to form right after the open. And then finally, the close, you're not trying to predict that either. So basically what we're trying to get at is you want to try to focus on a day when it's more likely to expand on the upside than that of going lower. How do you know that? How do you know which direction it's going to go? Well, I'm going to give you an example tonight and I'm going to give you a very small sample set of data to go back in and back test. So I'm going to give you a very specific parameter in time, a very specific pair. So that way you're not looking for all different things. We're all going to be looking at the same thing. And hopefully you'll get very close to what I'm going to outline for you next Friday. So yes, for some of you hardline cynics out there, this is a hindsight teaching exercise, but by learning these things, you'll be able to do what Everyone in my Telegram channel has been watching me do daily with real executions. So the next thing in this is institutional order flow. And I'll cover a little bit about that tonight so that way it helps you along. And everything is obviously reversed if you're looking for a market that's bearish, which is predominantly what we're going to be following in this exercise. Everything is more or less focused on this daily range profile. It won't exactly look like this, but we're focusing primarily on the moves that are expanding lower inside of a daily range. So imagine this as a candlestick on one particular day, and it's a bearish day. So we're focusing on days that's going to deliver price with an expansion lower and short selling only. And I'll build on that idea as we go through. All right, for this exercise, we're going to be looking at the Euro dollar. And I'm going to first flesh out the whole parameters with your daily chart. All right, here's the Euro dollar daily chart. Some of you have already been through my content. You already 
very familiar with the optimal trade entry, but I'm going to just give you all of the framework first and then define the actual range which you're going to go in and study. This is your dealing range. You have your high up here, your low down here. Now I know some of you already <laughs> are freaking out. Why is that a dealing range? Why is it not this high? And why is it not this high? You know what I mean? I already know what you're thinking. Try to push all those questions aside and just focus on the things I'm laying in front of you. Okay? I'm doing all the work for you so that way your focus is in a very specific period in time and that way you can only study in this area and then looking for the things that I'm going to outline. But the high here to that low, that's your dealing range. Inside that dealing range, if you run a fib across that, you get up into a premium market up in here which brings us to the optimal trade entry levels. 79, 70.5, 62% retracement. This is my classic optimal trade entry. Now, when price gets here and starts to move away, that is going to be the origin of the swing. What are we looking for? I want you to think about if you were a smart money trader, okay? If you were one of the big shots that knew what you were doing and you had lots of money behind your trades, and you were trying to get short up here, obviously with the benefit of hindsight, where would you first aim? Well, you could look to go to that low here. There's nothing inherently wrong about that, but what about this low right here? That's our dealing range low. So we wanna to try to see if we can get to that low and maybe get a little bit below it. I'm not trying to entice you to predict this low. My students know how to do that, but you only need to worry about getting to this low and just below it. Okay, so we're framing out this high to this low that's our framework for the trade but we look for this day to signify that it in, in fact is likely to go lower so at the close of this candle we're assuming and this is hypothetical so that we we all understand one another but the principles in this and how you go back and back test is how you learn Every person that's ever learned how to trade profitably with real money has always done this or a very similar process to this. It's back testing. If you're against the idea of learning like this, just turn the video off. Don't waste your time. Okay. But if you want to learn, this is how you do it. We're going to assume that the very next day here is our beginning study. And we'll use this right here, this is the first candle that trades to and through that old low. But we're targeting the sell stops here. So in essence, what we're doing is we're looking at the market where it trades above an old high here, and it goes up into optimal trade entry relative to this high, to that low, and we're looking for a swing that's gonna trade down to that low and below it. So we're gonna frame out that low to that high, and that looks like this, okay? So this is your frame of study. We're not looking at over here. We're not looking over here, only inside this blue shaded area. So if we break this down into an hourly chart, and this is the origin of the price swing up here, this is that Fibonacci on the daily chart. And the very next day is here, and we're seeing how the market trades lower. Every single price swing in here I want you to study this very carefully until we get down to this low over here. This is that old low on the daily chart. I said we would aim for the sell stops. This is where the move starts. This is what we are aiming for down here. So all of this price action, I want you to study this on a 15 minute time frame and a five minute time frame. And what you're looking for is every potential optimal trade entry every single one of them but we're focusing primarily only on the london session and the new york session so what time is that well you have to look at things in terms of new york time new york local time now this time of the month in march we were not in daylight savings time so you will have to look at right now if you set trading view to new york time and today's date being march 19th 2021 
if you pull up trading view and select New York as your trading view time frame or your time zone it's going to be UTC negative 4 if you set your time to Chicago it'll put you at pre daylight savings time and everything in these lower time frames will line up with the New York local time before daylight savings time started now it's probably confused a lot of you just go back and listen to what I just said it's very clear but you're gonna go through a 15 and or five minute time frame and I'll do this with you next Friday I'll have examples of what it is but I want you to look for every potential optimal trade entry in those respective time zones or kill zones as I call them London open kill zone New York open kill zone what frames that well for your learning we're just gonna say two o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the morning London and New York is 8.30 in the morning to 11 o'clock in the morning New York times so both in New York time okay if you do that and you go through each one of these price swings zooming in a little bit here on a 15 minute time frame you're gonna be analyzing and looking for every pullback that offered the setup with an optimal trade entry and you're gonna look at how much time it took for the trade to unfold and how much drawdown each one offered you don't be afraid to see if you would have looked at an optimal trade entry and where it would have failed include that that's actually a benefit to doing back testing because you can see where and you have to be honest here because sometimes everyone likes to look at the chart and say well I'm just gonna look at what works out <laughs> and you look at the times where it would have probably hurt you and your subconscious says don't pay attention to that no pay attention to it you're using the benefit of hindsight so that way you're not hurting yourself it's very important that you balance that because you can sweet talk yourself into thinking you see something that's going to be flawless because you have the benefit of hindsight but don't negate the opportunity for you to see where you would have failed looking for that type of setup you're going to see that they don't fail that many times versus when they do work because you're trading institutional order flow that's bearish here and again with the benefit of hindsight i know some of you outside my fold think this is ridiculous but we talked about this in our own group so it is what it is but the point is this the first steps in learning is going back and looking at old data and familiarizing yourself with the pattern and seeing how it forms, how often it forms, and how often it fails. And having the data behind it, how many pips does it offer in profit, how much drawdown does it take for where you would get in at, and we're gonna use 62% retracement. That's gonna be your entry, okay? Don't try to do the 70.5, don't look for the 79%, use 62%, okay? And frame it with the high like I'll give you one of them just for the sake of suggesting how you should do it from this high to that low okay it's not in the kill zone time that's why I'm picking this one so it's not taking anything away from you this high to that low 62 whatever that price is that would be your hypothetical entry point your stop has to be five pips above the old high that you pulled your fib from so in other words, dragging your FIB from here to here, wherever 62% retracement level is, that's your entry price. That's your old high, and you add five pips to that. We're only selling short, so we're looking for bearish optimal trade entries. So five pips above the old high, that's your stop. 62% retracement level, whatever that price level is, that's your entry. And then you see what candle it hits that and how much it goes above it from your entry point hypothetically at 62% tracement level to the highest high before it starts to drop in your favor that's how much drawdown you record how many pips that is and then how much pips it offers for profit potential but you have to take the profit before the session ends so in other words if you're trading London you have to close it or hypothetically close it before 5 a.m. New York time and in the New York session you have to close the trade by 11 a.m. Okay, and obviously going forward, you can see after we had a small little retracement in here, the market creates 
new price swings and then finally ultimately trades below attacking the sell stops in here okay so that's going to be your homework and again just as a review the exercise is interactive learning for back testing intraday scalping in the forex market we're using the 15 and or five minute charts on forex we're going to be finding all the optimal trade entry setups in euro dollar you're not trying to do this with other pairs if you trade like pound yen or euro yen or something other than euro dollar don't do it in that one because i'm not going to be showing you examples with that pair i'm only showing you examples next friday with euro dollar you're only focusing in on the blue shaded area that i showed you in this presentation try to focus only london and new york setups no asian sessions no between the kill zones just the time windows i gave you earlier in the video total number of pips each yielded and the total number of pips in drawdown and obviously like i said we'll review it next friday night it'll probably be around 10 o'clock next friday my local time and until then i wish you good luck and good trading